Dr. Guys, and today we are going to help you answer the question, should I start 3D printing? Yes, which means should you buy your first 3D printer? T. Earl Grey, hot. Can you order tea, sir? And going into 2020, the answer is absolutely yes. Now this kicks off a new series on the channel, um, which is primarily about FPV racing or flying drones on 3D printing. And I'm gonna be covering a lot of items that you can print to help you in your drone flying, drone racing, like this multi-GP racing gate elbow hinge joint. Um, but I'm also going to be covering 3D printing hobby things like this really cool T-Rex skull that you print in two parts like this. And so first off, let's start on where should you get started? When I started 3D printing, I had been already wanting to start printing for years. Years, guys. And by the time I finally jumped in, which was sometime maybe almost three years ago now, um one of the options on the market was the maker it was the monoprice mini uh, which has a very small build volume only about that big uh, and then there was the creality cr10 and that's what i got in with guys that's a printer that retails for about 400 dollars, and so it is a little bit on the higher price um, compared to what you have available to you today and today if i were buying again i would buy one of these Ender 3s. That's right, I have a pair of them now. I still have my CR10, which is an outstanding printer. And the biggest difference in those is the Ender 3, I actually just bought my second one right here um, for $162. Now, you can also use Banggood points for those purchases. So I was able to bring my price down to under 150 bucks for the second printer or the second Ender 3. And what are the considerations that you want? Well, your buy-in price for the printer is first and foremost what you're gonna wanna spend. And now any of these modern printers are able to print totally fine out of the box as soon as you put them together. Now there are a variety of upgrades available and I'll be covering those. As you can see, this one already has several upgrades done to it and I'll be covering those in episodes, but this one I have intentionally put together and left 100% stock. And I'm gonna be printing the same prints on both of these printers to show you just how good a stock one is. Uh, in fact, I really encourage you to leave your printer stock as long as possible while you learn the ins and outs of 3D printing. Now, when I started with my CR10, that one has a larger build volume and it lets you print things that are really, really big, like this Mandalorian helmet. Just to let you know the size differences between these two printers I'm talking about. This is my CR10. The build volume of this is 300 millimeters wide, 300 millimeters deep, and 400 millimeters tall. So I could easily fit this helmet in one piece on here. I actually printed it upside down um, going that way, but you can do it either way. And it can actually, as you can see, print something much taller if I really wanted to. This Ender 3 has a much smaller print volume. This is 200 millimeters wide, 200 millimeters back, and um, 300 millimeters tall. So it is a good bit smaller. You could not fit um, this helmet on there. You'd have to print it in pieces. But I think if I had to do it over again, I would have printed this in pieces anyway. I had to try five times before I could successfully print one. I kept having issues where my printer spool would jam. Now that's a very simple error. It doesn't have to do with any of the pieces that I mentioned but it's still something that can kill your print. This took about 51 hours to complete. So this probably died somewhere around 30 hours. Very frustrating, took me five tries. This is the furthest along. I could actually fix this um, by trying to figure out exactly how far I went up this way, print the remainder and then glue them together. In fact, actually I had an error all the way at the end of this one. So you can see I did that and glued on this very bottom portion. 
Um, I'm actually primering right now, so I don't want to touch it too much. But uh, that's kind of something that's very common. And so if I printed this intentionally in pieces, that's exactly what I would do. Uh, the other note is that all throughout the last few years, printing, learning how to print, I have not designed anything myself. Now there are a variety of tools and tutorials out there that you can design. Fusion 360 is a great free design platform, but this just goes to show you how many models are available for you to download free from Thingiverse or from the other sites and um, that can really, really get you going printing some really cool stuff. Um, all of these models, here is Gizmo Duck that I printed. This is several pieces and put together. Um, of course, there are a variety of these really cool Baby Yoda options. Love printing Baby Yodas. Prior to that, a few years ago, the hot thing was Baby Groots. Everyone was printing Baby Groots. Uh, and then this is an example of a paid model. This is a, um, someone took the model of uh, Boba Fett from Kenner's original Star Wars line, modeled it up. You can actually put it together. It has rotating joints for the limbs and the head. Very, very cool. Took some cool pictures of that as well. This paid model, I think the model was like $3.30 or something like that. I'll leave you the link to all these in the description. This is my test print that I always do. Um, it is a tiny little robot. I give these away if I have people coming over with their kids or, or somebody that's just interested in uh, 3D printing. I always have several of these. Anytime I get a new filament, this is what I print to test out that filament. This is actually sort of a tricky um, model because I don't put any supports and I do it on purpose because that leaves a couple of really tough bridges for the filament to have to fill. And so it just um, goes to show this is a really cheap, the whole roll for one kilogram, um, which is how they come, was only 13 bucks. Now I'm doing lots of deals currently on the FPV Sales Alerts Facebook group, so join that if you want to get into tune for cheap filament deals, cheap printer deals. Um, but in FPV, what we really want to print with a lot is not the super easy PLA filaments. Um, it is... TPU, like the gate hidden I showed you. This is a 533 pot. This design uh, for this racing quad is available on Thingiverse for the really cool 533 switchback frame. And you can print this out, try it for yourself. Comes with this integrated turtle mode, sort of a, like a little fin dome thing. Really, really cool. Um, this is, I'm not sure if it's quite tough enough to really, for my taste, but it does have some cool camera protection right there. And the thing is, once you get your settings dialed in, you can print anything. And a lot of, of us um, in the drone building space are still a little bit intimidated. And a lot of the reviewers of, of 3D printing gear will tell you some of the difficulties, some of the learning curve, etc. But don't forget, if you've built a drone, then you are far more experienced in working with electronics than you will need for putting together a 3D printer and troubleshooting a 3D printer. Now I caused myself unneeded stress and aggravation over the years because my printer printed so well out of the box. This T-Rex um, skull was actually one of the first things I printed and it's absolutely flawless. It's so beautiful. It came out perfectly um, with no tweaks, just like loaded the file and hit print. Um, and that really did me a little bit of a disservice in the long run because I didn't properly learn how my printer worked or how to troubleshoot it. Um, so I really suggest you take a little bit of time to learn, sort of watch some of those videos. Printers are really made up of only about five components, right? There's the structure and then you have motors that move the, um, heating, the heating element, um, and three axes that we're all familiar with, X, Y, and Z, of course. So um, these motors move them across and your bed may move also so that you can print in three dimensions. So you have um, each of those axes that move on belts or rails, those need to be tied. So that's one component. Second component is the extruder. That is what pushes the filament through a Bowden tube or a direct drive system through, that's the second element, the extruder. The extruder pushes it through your uh, your hot end. Your hot end is made up of about three pieces. It is a heating element, 
a heat break, which you do not want it to be hot there, a thermistor, which actually heats the heat block, and then you have a temperature sensor, which monitors that temperature and makes sure it doesn't get too hot. So the nozzle heats up, it pushes the filament through into a fine layer, the um, motors move it in the direction necessary, and if you have problems, it's with basically one of those three or four components. It's generally always your bed level is off, that's the fourth component. So it's your bed level, your hot end, or your extruder are like 90% of the issues that you could possibly have. The other 10, the other 10 percent are generally things on your axes, so your belts may need tightening or something like that. And other than that, that's it, guys. So you have to pay careful attention to that. I started having issues because a fan went out and I didn't realize that it was no longer blowing. So I kept getting constant clogs further up the nozzle. So your heating element, you want only your nozzle to be hot, but not the portion of your printer above the nozzle. And that's what was happening to me. And if I would have taken the time to learn about my printer, I would have had a far easier and successful printing um, experience prior to that but now that i have you know for 20 at the end of 2019 i really decided i was going to watch about 20 hours of content in order to absorb all of the knowledge add it to the knowledge i already had and now i'm very comfortable troubleshooting anything that goes on with my printers and i have them dialed in pretty well and finally i'm able to print things without much hesitation i was able to print a couple of parts for uh, a young member of one of our local drone crews that needed some parts for a school project. I was able to print um, one of my chapter mates um, that he always provides the racing gates for us. I was able to print him several sets of these elbows for his um, racing gates. These make taking up and setting, setting up and taking down the gates so much easier. Now I did try to print these out of PLA first. They're not strong enough, don't bother with that. People told me that. Jason tried to tell me that. I didn't listen. Jason, you're right. <laughs> Print them out of TPU. Now, what the settings I use for these TPU elbow joints are um, I go at a pretty low speed, about 25 millimeters per second. And then I go at a temperature of, I believe, 220 or 225. And then I use 60% infill with three walls that makes uh, for good strength and this prints actually like this the joint is already assembled whenever it's done printing you just kind of crack the little um, things inside to be able to let it move freely freely and this is almost unbreakable so what do you think guys in the comments if you are curious about what to buy for your first 3d printer i recommend the ender 3 um, should you go for the pro or the regular i personally think the pro is a good value it has an upgraded power supply it has an upgraded bed um, but the bed is something you can take on or off i really think that a five or six dollar sheet of glass or a mirror or a mirror tile um, is going to print better than the bed that is upgraded on the Pro, so I don't think that's worth it. The power supply is worth it, but the power supply does not affect anything with how the printer is going to print. has the same extruder, has the same nozzle, has the same heating element, has the same stepper motors that move all of those um, pieces around. So to me, if the Pro was only about $20 more, I would say get it. A lot of times it's usually $40 or $50 difference, so in that case, I highly recommend you get the regular one for as cheap as possible and then spend some of those dollars on upgrades. And we're going to go on this series diving into one upgrade at a time to get your printer perfectly awesome. Now, some of those upgrades are not always going to be with print quality. The printers are noisy, guys. I was banished from uh, the room that I had been in because it was too noisy and now I'm in this room. Uh, so I was given sort of a print room. This is going to be sort of my studio uh, from now on as well. But, uh, you know, if you don't have an extra room that you can put this stuff in, I'm going to show you the inexpensive upgrades that you can do to make the noise on this virtually inaudible, right? So stay tuned for that. Uh, if you want to learn more about 3D Printer, leave me a comment below and I'll keep making this content for you guys. Thanks, guys.